I've been really on my own when I think about it Yeah, my house is not a home when I think about it I've been feeling so alone when I think about it Yeah, nobody really got me when I think about it It's me! It's me! Simba TV! Bang! What is good, YouTube fam? It's your boy Simba coming back here again with another reaction video for you guys today. For today's reaction video, we got the Magic School Bus Doppelganger Theory. Now, man, Alex, he is a genius when it comes to the Spongebob theories, man. And I'm happy to see him doing other TV shows, especially the Magic School Bus, man. Because I always wondered about this damn TV show. It's, it's, it's really creepy when you go back and actually watch it. It's really creepy. So I can't wait to jump up in it, man. There's something about going back and rewatching old TV shows from your childhood that just fills you with this warm, nostalgic feeling. Even though you're older now and your tastes have changed, these shows can still connect with you in ways that nothing else can today. That's at least how I feel when I rewatch The Magic School Bus. A show before everything became cynical and edgy. A show that just wanted to teach people how the world works. But then you find something in that show that you don't remember. Hmm. Something dark. Janet, you want proof? I'll give you proof. Here's proof of what'll happen to you if you stay here with your stuff. I don't know! Oh, huh. That's weird. I, I, I don't remember Arnold dying in the show. Me either! And the more I rewatched, the more I realized how much I missed as a kid, and I knew I had to make my next theory about this. Inside the Magic School Bus is a culture of fear and lies, all to hide a massive secret. Trust me, this theory is just as dark or complex as any of my Spongebob theories. This is the Magic School Bus Doppelganger Theory. Ooh! The Magic School Bus is an animated educational kids show that aired from 1994 to 1997 and later got rebooted on Netflix in 2017. Which is it weird. It follows Miss Frizzle and her class of 4th grade students as they use the Magic School Bus to go on crazy field trips to places like outer space, inside the human body, and traveling back in time, all to learn about how the world works. Like a lot of you, I watched it in school growing up, but it wasn't until recently that I started to question some things about the show. Like, do the parents know that their kids are regularly going on these dangerous life-threatening expeditions? And how is Arnold still alive after taking off his helmet in space? You know, man, I always thought about that. Like, did the parents have to, like, sign permission slips, you feel me, to let these kids go into the human body and whatnot? And how did Miss Fizzle not get, like, jail time or something? Because she was consistently putting these kids' lives on the line. Like, come on now, let's be real. Thanks, Janet. Oh, he just got a cold after being exposed to the freezing vacuum of space. That's it. Something seems wrong here. But wait, before we even begin to question the logic of the show, we have to ask if there's even anything here worth theorizing about. I get this comment all the time. It's just a kid's show. And you're right. When it comes to most kid shows, there's usually no internal logic to how or why things happen. And it would be pointless to try and make a theory about it. Except, here's the thing that sets the Magic School Bus apart from most kid shows. The show itself is constantly pointing out and questioning its own logic. It does this at the end of every episode during something called the producer segment. At the end of every episode, a character known as the producer for the Magic School Bus TV show shows up and answers questions from the fans. I forgot about that. Hello. Hi, you work on the Magic School Bus show, right? You bet, I'm the producer. That's right. Just like SpongeBob, the Magic School Bus breaks the fourth wall and acknowledges the fact that it's a TV show. Except, the Magic School Bus does it in a very interesting way. At first, I thought this character was supposed to be an animated stand-in for the actual real-life producer of the show, but 
The producer doesn't talk about the show like it's animated. He talks about it like it's a live action production. How come there was only one kind of bat on your show? There are almost 1,000 different kinds, you know. Uh, well, those kind of bats were banned from the set. In fact, everyone talks about it like it's a live action TV show. Is this the bakery where they filmed that magic school bus show? Yes. What we are seeing here is not the actual producer of the PBS animated Magic School Bus show. We are seeing a fictional producer character for an in-universe live-action TV show inside of the real-life animated Magic School Bus show. Oh, it's damn. It's confusing, I know. Think of it like a mockumentary where the filmmakers are just as much a part of the story as the characters. So, just like my SpongeBob television theory, everything we see in the show is being filmed by in-universe cameras, and everything that happens is just scripted for the purposes of creating an educational live-action TV show. Since when can a bus shrink and sprout legs like a bullfrog? Since the scriptwriter wrote it in for the purposes of this episode. You didn't believe the part where the kids got so close to the volcano. It's television! We all know real kids don't go inside volcanoes. And another thing, if an astronaut ever does make it to Pluto, she'd better not take her helmet off. You think they'd end up with more than a cold, huh? She'd end up a block of ice, or worse. None of the characters actually go to space or travel through time. There's no real danger or magic involved. In the canon of the show, everything we see is fake. And this isn't even a Truman Show situation where the main characters are unaware they're being filmed. The kids actually sometimes show up or call in on the producer segment and talk as if they know about the show. Watching that huh. show, you'd think that nighttime lasted about five seconds. Oh, well, we were a little short on time. So, that pretty much answers every possible question I could have about this show, right? Like, anything weird or dark I find could just be explained away by it being scripted by the showrunners. And I almost gave up on making this theory because of that. Until I realized, that's exactly what the Magic School Bus wants us to think. In Season 2, Episode 3, The Bussosaurus, the class travels back in time on the Magic School Bus to visit the dinosaurs. During the episode, they keep track of which dinosaurs only ate plants with this chart. But when they go back to the present, we don't see the class take the chart with them. Just like the end of every episode, they have a producer segment, this time with a guest star from the show, and they clarify none of the magic they showed was real. So no one's ever traveled back in time and seen real dinosaurs? Absolutely not. Time travel is impossible. But it's what happens at the very end of this segment that changes everything. Oh, but of course it's not. How could they find the dinosaur chart buried underground if the time travel wasn't real? This directly contradicts what the producers are constantly saying about the show. And this happens all the time in the producer segments. Which reminds me why I called in the first place. Yes? I'm still waiting for someone to get that pile of litter off my planet. Everybody knows there's no such thing as ghosts. <laughs> Use gum for bungee jumping, not in a million years. I wish you guys would stick to the facts. It took water more than 15 million years to carve out the Grand Canyon. About as long as it's going to take you to freeze that water. The impossible things that happen on these field trips are clearly real in the canon of the show, but why are they lying about it? Huh. In fact, they seem to get kind of nervous whenever the callers get pushy about what's real and what's not. It would have taken weeks for the asteroid to reach the sun. You made it seem like it could happen in seconds. Well, uh, we had to fake it. And Ms. Frizzle must be magic. Why do you say that? What was that? Um, that? Oh, that was just the sound of Liz stretching the truth. So why not just tell them that it's a real magic school bus? What's with all the secrecy? The class is constantly going to places like outer space, the bottom of the sea, inside an active volcano, all extremely dangerous places that no school could ever take kids unless they lied about it and pretended like the field trips were just faked as a part of an elaborate fictional TV show. And the cover up goes much farther than just the show. The principal of the school has no idea what they're doing on these field trips. That would make sense. Me you went inside a chicken to find me an egg? Yes, sir, we did. But going inside a chicken is not a state-approved field trip. And even when they tell him, he doesn't believe them. Do you really expect me to believe? That would make sense why she never gets in trouble. That would also make sense why their parents 
wouldn't know because because if, if if the parents are in on it they're in on oh we're just taking this nice little field trip to this farm to get eggs that ooh see see man i love when he does these videos you start thinking about stuff that you probably would have not thought about like damn that the chicken laid an egg with all of you inside it. And even the parents don't know what's going on. And now, live from the throat. Ralphie, that little girl looks just like your friend Wanda. Who, her? No, no, no. Wanda's much, uh, shorter. Ralphie, I know that guilty look. What's going on? Uh, <laughs> nothing, Mom. <laughs> really. Oh, I'm sure they were just hanging around. Right, Ralphie? Great, Miss Frizzle! It's never explicitly stated in the show, but if you pay attention, it's clear that these field trips are a massive secret, and the kids are actively helping hide it. But Miss Frizzle, we can't let Mr. Junket know the bus is magic. <laughs> he can't know what he can't see. But why? I could see why the producers are hiding the secret, but why are the kids in on it? Maybe it's just because they love the field trip so much, and they know that if the secret got out, they wouldn't be able to go on them anymore. But. I think there might be something more going on here. In the very first episode of The Magic School Bus, Arnold brings his cousin Janet to visit his school, and she mentions that Arnold told her all about you the know what? they go on. Yo, now that I'm looking at this girl, at Janet, she looks like Miss Frizzle. Like, she resembles Miss... What if... What if... Hear me out. What if... She's... Miss Frizzle, right? Miss Frizzle is her, but in the future, like, like just a grown-up version of her. So that would that would mean Arnold and Miss Frizzle are cousins. I mean, it's not far fetched. She, she could be, she could be, she could be Miss Frizzle, man. And we already know Miss Frizzle is magic. You feel me? She got the magic bus. So it's not far fetched. What if she she as a kid found that bus and then traveled into the future and was like, I want to be a teacher for these kids and 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 teach them all this blah blah blah. I'm just saying, bro. I'm just saying. Arnold told me all about your field trips, at Dorothy and. What did he say? Look at their reactions to hearing this. They are terrified of someone else knowing the truth. Now, I've already shown you that clip of Arnold taking off his helmet and freezing in space, but I didn't show you why he did it. Throughout the entire episode, Janet is trying to collect proof to prove that she went to space. And in order to convince Janet not to bring back incriminating evidence, Arnold does this. There's no way I'm going home without my stuff. It's proof. Nobody will believe me without it. Janet, you want proof? Arnold is more afraid of Janet exposing their secrets than taking off his helmet in space. What could these kids possibly be so afraid of happening if the truth got out? Well, in season 1 episode 11, we actually do get to see what DA thinks would happen if her old teacher found out about their field trips. Um, Mr. Seaflat? I'd like you to meet- Take chances! Make mistakes! Get messy! Oh, we never did anything like this at our old school. That's scary as hell. It's Miss Frizzle. They're all afraid of Miss Frizzle. Miss Frizzle may seem like this quirky, fun, eccentric teacher, but she is constantly manipulating these kids into being afraid and totally obedient. In episode 2, Arnold asked Miss Frizzle if he could skip the field trip. Miss Frizzle, I'd really love to go on a field trip, but. But I've got this weird feeling. Well, Arnold, I do need a volunteer to stay behind. She casually says he can stay behind, but then without telling him, they shrink down and go inside of Arnold for their field trip. At the end of the episode, they tell Arnold they were inside of him, and after this horrifying realization sets in, he says this. You went... inside? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Frizzle, no matter what, I'll never miss another field trip. Never, ever, ever, ever.
ever. The message Miss Frizzle is sending is clear. If you disobey or try to miss a field trip, there will be consequences. And if you don't believe me, in the very next episode, the exact same thing happens. In this episode, Ralphie gets sick and his mom tells him he has to miss school, but Ralphie vehemently tries to fight it. It's my opinion, as your mother, and as a doctor, that you have a fever, which means you are sick, which means you are going back to bed. But, but mom! Seems kind of weird, right? Usually kids love to miss school, especially a slacker, goofball character like Ralphie. But no, he knows there will be consequences if he misses a field trip. And as expected, the class goes to his house, shrinks down, and goes inside of him. It's like an unspoken rule of the class. If you miss a field trip, you will become the field trip. There is a culture of fear and lies in the classroom, and Miss Frizzle is at the heart of all of it. No matter what, you must keep her secrets and continue going on these dangerous field trips, even if there's risk of getting hurt or worse. Which brings me back to my original question. How did Arnold actually survive after taking off his helmet in space? What if I told you he didn't? And the Arnold we see after this is not the same Arnold. I'm intrigued. So, the magic school bus is supposed to be this infinitely powerful magical contraption, right? It can go anywhere, travel through time, and change itself or anyone else into just about anything. So, who's to say that the kids who get injured or killed don't just magically get brought back to life by the bus off screen? But after Arnold comes back from being frozen in space, he acts different. In the very next episode after he gets frozen, they keep calling attention to the fact that Arnold is acting weird for some reason. You feel alright, Arnold? It's sort of explained away in the episode, but it's weird how they keep bringing it up. Miss Frizzle, I'd really love to go on a field trip, but but I've got this weird feeling. And before he was frozen, we heard him say this. I wonder where we're going today. Inside a rotten log? Been there to the bottom of the ocean, done that. He mentions how they've already been to the bottom of the ocean and inside of a rotten log, but they visit both of these places in future episodes and Arnold never mentions the fact that they've already been there. In fact, no one does. It's like they don't even remember these past field trips. And this show does have continuity and a precedent for mentioning old field trips. This looks familiar, kind of like when we were in your bloodstream, Ralphie. Remember? There's something really strange going on with these kids, but for the longest time, I couldn't figure out what it was. Ooh. And then I discovered something. Something so impossible and confusing that when I saw it, it honestly gave me chills. In episode two, the Magic School Bus shrinks down and goes inside of Arnold to learn about the digestive system. But there's something inside of Arnold that made me question everything about this show. Something that I guarantee you wouldn't normally notice. Are you ready? Let me play the clip for you. The esophagus. It's where your food goes after you swallow. <sighs> Miss Frizzle, what are you doing? Did you see it? Let's slow it down a bit. How the fuck is Arnold <laughs> inside of Arnold? He is the one person who absolutely cannot be in the bus right now. But there he is, sitting in the back. But the next time we see the back of the bus, he's gone. No way, th this has to be some sort of really weird animation mistake, right? Except 25 seconds later, we see him again sitting in the back of the bus. How is Arnold inside of Arnold? Okay, maybe they just made the same mistake twice, right? Except this isn't even the only episode where this happens. In season four, episode two, the class learns about a chicken's life cycle and shrinks Arnold down inside of an egg to watch it hatch. <laughs> While they're waiting for it to hatch, the rest of the class goes to talk to the principal in his office, without Arnold. Except for a single shot, we can see Arnold in the office even though he's supposed to be inside of the egg. And just like last time, he immediately disappears as soon as we cut back to where he was standing. Who is this second Arnold who keeps appearing in places he shouldn't be? And that's when it all made sense. The Magic School Bus doesn't bring dead kids back to life. They replace them with identical clones or how I like to call them, doppelgangers. 
It is no coincidence that this second Arnold showed up in the episode immediately after Arnold died in space. This is either the space Arnold's body, or some sort of rogue doppelganger they lost track of, trying to blend in in the back of class. But, wait a second. Can the Magic School Bus even create clones of living things? Like, it seems like the Magic School Bus can do anything, but we never actually see it duplicate or create something from scratch. It only ever changes things. It can turn a student into a fish, but it never creates a fish out of nothing. Trust me, I have looked everywhere in both this show and the reboot, and there is no evidence the bus can create life. But that's only because I was looking in the wrong place. Miss Frizzle's classroom is absolutely full of dioramas of human body parts. An eye, a foot, an ear, the human skeleton. But if you pay close attention to these background hey, objects, yo, what? you'll realize they're not dioramas. They constantly move and blink as if they're alive, and the only possible explanation is that they were created by the Magic School Bus. Meaning it is totally possible for the bus to grow these doppelgangers to replace the students. Every time a student dies on a field trip, they have the perfect solution to cover it up. You know, I didn't know this show was so creepy, man. As a kid, you watch it and it's so fun, it's awesome, you know, it's amazing, but this shit is really creepy. Kind of scary, actually. Like, it's messing with me a lot. Like, I don't know how I feel about it. But how often could they possibly need to do this? Yeah, the kids regularly put themselves in danger, but the closest we get to an on-screen death was Arnold taking off his helmet, and that's only one episode. Well, remember, the show itself is an unreliable narrator. They're obviously gonna cut out or recontextualize anything that could expose them. But I think they let an important clue slip in the very first episode. Remember, when Arnold came back from being frozen in space, he was sick, which seemed to carry over with how weird he was acting in the next episode. Maybe when a doppelganger is created, they come out very weak from the cloning process and have the symptoms of a sickness. Is it possible every time a character gets sick in the show, they've actually been recently replaced with a doppelganger? How else does the producer know details about Ralphie's specific sickness? Uh, what were those kids doing visiting Ralphie when he is so sick and tired? Oh. Oh, well, don't worry, he wasn't infectious. And Ralphie not being infectious would make sense if it's not actually a sickness, but the symptoms of being a newly grown doppelganger. And the same episode Ralphie gets sick, the skeleton in the classroom has a completely different outfit from previous episodes, huh. with a different tie and no sunglasses. Maybe the classroom skeleton is where they store the body of the last dead student. It even has very similar shoes to Ralphie's. But this goes far beyond just the occasional student oh! being replaced. I have found evidence of past field trips that went so horribly wrong that no student came back from them alive. In episode 4, they shrink down and take a field trip into the ocean. Eventually, they get fished out by a fishing woman who says this. Nope. Already have a bus. Look out! Why would she have already fished up a miniature bus from the ocean? I mean, maybe it's like a toy or something, but that's not the only time something like this has happened. In Season 2, Episode 1, they explore an underwater volcano and briefly pass by a random sunken ship. Except, if you look closely, it has a figurehead of Miss Frizzle on the front of the ship. Why on earth would a random ship at the bottom of the ocean have this? Well, it looks Facts. a lot like when the Magic School Bus turned into a boat in Season 4, Episode 13. Oh, had a figurehead shit, of son! Liz, the class pet. These are the wreckages of past failed field trips trips where nobody returned alive. There have been countless children who have died on these field trips, but why? What is the point of all this? Who's really running the show here, and what is the true identity of Miss Frizzle? Oh! That's crazy, bro! The Magic School Bus TV show is run by the producers we see at the end of every episode. You bet, I'm the producer. Uh, one of them. There's two characters who have been called producers of the show, and we never find out their names or where they came from. But do they look familiar at all to you? They have a very similar appearance to Tim and Wanda. Is it possible the producers are actually the original students who survived all these years? And the similarities go far beyond just their appearances. The male producer is seen working on a beef farm that we've never seen before. So, they grew up? and wanted to tell stories about their adventures. That's not far-fetched either, because, I mean, they did look just like them. Ooh, it's, it's getting juicy up in here. Before, but Tim mentions in Season 3, Episode 1, that his grandpa owns a bee farm. 
I've been delivering honey from my grandpa's bee farm all summer. Maybe the producer is working on his grandfather's farm. And just like how the producer works on storyboards, we see Tim working on his comic books. The female producer has a big plush frog in her office, and we know Wanda used to have a pet frog that she loved. You know, Miss Frizzle, I was really glad when you said I could bring my best friend Bella the Bullfrog to school. In fact, in Season 1, Episode 5, Wanda has to let her pet frog go to live a happier life in the wild, and we see the producer rewatch this scene and cry. Bye, Bella. I know you're going to have a good life here, but... I am going to miss you. Bella! Bella! <laughs> I think it is very likely that the producers are the original Tim and Wanda. But what about the rest of the original students? Maybe Tim and Wanda are the only survivors, but I did find this guy working at a carnival in Season 2, Episode 10 that looks a lot like Ralphie. And I could also totally see Ralphie growing up to work at a carnival. But then what about Miss Frizzle? Even though we see the producers running things at the end of the episode, it seems like Miss Frizzle is also in charge of the show. You really expect us to believe that Mikey had the power to actually knock the bell clear off the hammer slammer? Just between us, we had a story conference about that and it was Miss Frizzle's idea. But we know nothing about Miss Frizzle's past, and obviously she doesn't resemble any of the kids like the producers do. I mean, the closest comparison we have is Arnold with their similar hair color, but obviously Arnold is male and Miss Frizzle is female, right? And that's what I thought too, until I discovered Pickle Theory. Pickle theory is not a theory I created, it's something I discovered while researching for this video. It stems from this weird moment in Season 2, Episode 7 with Miss Frizzle. Whoa! There's a ton of pickles in here! You caught me, Ralphie. Oh, I have a private and powerful passion for pickles! Even if I told you the context of this episode, this moment wouldn't really make sense. Miss Frizzle just has a secret closet full of pickles and a private and powerful passion for them for some unexplained reason. But this is where pickle theory comes in. To understand pickle theory, you need to understand that there's a common medication used in hormone therapy for trans women that has the side effect of making you crave sodium. And pickles are very salty, so they've become a common snack in the female transgender community. And pickle theory states that this weird moment with Miss Frizzle admitting to a private craving for pickles is a hint about her actually being a transgender woman. And I think it's a cool theory, but probably not enough evidence to win me over yet. And even if it is true, there's definitely not enough evidence to say Miss Frizzle is the original Arnold. I mean, she doesn't even wear glasses like him. But then, I watch Season 4, Episode 10, where we actually get to see inside of Miss Frizzle's house for the very first time. And I found a picture on her wall that is going to blow your mind. A picture of someone who looks a lot like a female version of Arnold, right down to the yellow and white shirt and glasses. I think this is what Miss Frizzle looked like as a kid. Either she's transgender, or the cloning process can just create different gender versions of characters, but whatever it is, you can't tell me this doesn't make it seem like Frizzle is a female version of Arnold. Even her name, Miss Frizzle, sounds fake. It sounds like something she just made up because she has frizzy hair, a trait that she shares with Arnold. All of the people running the Magic School Bus show are the original versions of the students, creating doppelgangers of themselves and forcing them to go on dangerous field trips. But why? What is this all for? to make the Magic School Bus TV show and educate the kids of the world. And God damn it, it worked. Is this the Magic School mm. Bus? In this universe, everyone knows about the Magic School Bus. It is a massive success. If you want to educate the world, then in the words of Miss Frizzle, you have to take chances, Make mistakes and get messy. Get very, very messy. <laughs> and that's the Magic School Bus Doppelganger Theory. Okay, bye. That's dope, man. Hold on. Let me just make sure it's finished. Yeah, it's finished because he be doing that sometimes. But that's dope, man. I love his theories. Like I said, like he just he brings up points that you just wouldn't think about, especially as a kid, because you just think it's a kid's, you know, show. But a lot of these have some dark ass theories and I love it, man. If you guys like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button for me. Thank you guys for commenting, sharing and subscribing. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.